Welcome to the Infernal Brotherhood's Willow series. Today, we're going to answer the question, who is the High Alduin? We'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel for more Willow content and like and share this video. This information is taken from the Willow source book by Alan Varney. Most authoritative positions in a Nelwyn village are chosen electorally, not unlike a representative democracy. The Nelwyn villagers elect their council members, and the council members appoint a prefect. In Willow's village, the prefect is Burglecut. The Alduin is a different situation entirely. It is a master-apprentice appointment where, with the passing of the current Alduin, their apprentice becomes the new Alduin. If the current Alduin has no apprentice, a neighboring village's Alduin appoints the replacement. This is traditionally their own apprentice. Because Alduins hold such sway over the health and welfare of the village, they are quickly adopted. The functions of an Alduin include, but are not limited to, praying for good weather, abundant harvests, and rich mineral loads, staving off premature death and physical catastrophe, and consulting the bones for omens of the future. But this isn't to say all Alduins are gracious, which leads us directly to the tale of how Willow's village's Alduin was appointed. His predecessor, Alduin, was named Lugumph, before forsaking the name for the office of Alduin. Lugumph was a horrible person. He terrorized the village with portents of doom, famine, stripped mines, attacks from Daikinis, moral collapse, and infestations of ticks. Basically, the faux news of his day. If that wasn't bad enough, he would beat local children, focusing much of his ill temper on a stout Nelwyn teen named June. Lugumph called for war with a neighboring village one midsummer festival, decrying them as heretics. The Nelwins are famously non-aggressive and shrugged off the High Alduin's incitement. This only made Lugumph more focused and decided to create an incident that would be so devious, so foul, that the village would cheerfully go to war. Lugumph approached his apprentice Glog at the leaf-turning festival and handed him a wand, he told Glog that the wand would turn its target into a black root. He was to recite the magical words with the wand pointed at the village's wicker man and leave the wand behind. This would then be blamed on the Lilton village's Alduin, and war would be inevitable. Glog went to the wicker man, the village's symbol for pastoral life which rules the Nelwyn's hearts, and began his incantation. At that very moment, June was passing by. He witnessed Glog and took immediate action. June grabbed the other end of the wand and repeated the magic words exactly as Glog was saying them. Only he finished before Glog could. The village was raised by the screams that emanated from Glog's throat. His foot had shriveled into a black root and it seemed to be spreading up his leg. Terrified, Glog admitted to the High Alduin's plan, asking for help. The village was so incensed at the brazen warmongering and assault on their own village, they turned against the High Alduin Lugumph and his apprentice Glog, throwing them out of the village, never to be seen again. This, however, left a vacuum and a need to heal the villagers' minds. The village approached Lilton's High Alduin, asking him to appoint someone in Lugump's absence. The Lilton's Alduin appointed June. If the lad could redirect a magical wand's spell on its caster, he was strong enough in magic to be an Alduin himself. With some training, of course. After some time, June forsook his name and became the High Alduin who would instruct Willow. And that is all the time I have to talk about the High Alduin. Thank you for spending time with us. We'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel and feel free to click the like button and share this video. Until the Infernal Brotherhood convenes again, my fellow scruffy looking nerf herders, may the force be with you. No apprentice this year! Oh.